Hey everyone, this is Martin from How To Make Mobile Games. Hope everyone's having a great weekend. This video today is me going through how to test Amazon in-app purchases on a Kindle. Um, I'm actually doing this as I'm developing and, and doing stuff for Panda Tap Games. So one of our development partners up in Beijing, they, uh, we work with them to publish their game on Amazon and Google Play. And we, we just got a new game from them. And what I need to do is I need to test the in-app purchases on the device before it gets uploaded to Amazon. And this is, um, I think I've done a video like this before, if, if I remember correctly, maybe late last year. But I wanted to do another one anyway because it's something that I'm doing right now and it hopefully will be useful and kind of reiterate how to, how to do these steps. So this isn't a, um, a tutorial. It's not got a, a clear, uh, you know, step one, step two, step three. I'm just doing this as I'm going along. But hopefully, it will be clear enough for, for everybody to just follow along and get the steps and then know how to do it. Uh, because I had a little bit of confusion when I first did this. Like I don't know, it must, must have been uh, maybe eight months ago or seven months ago, in fact. So um, I think my previous video would have been um, sometime this year. So, uh, so yeah, it's not going to be very smooth, but I'll just talk through it, and then hopefully you guys can pick up as I'm as I'm sort of going anyway. So, um, all right. So the first thing is I need to install the um, the the game onto the device. So the latest build that I have, and so all I've done is I plugged in my Kindle here. This can be on an Android as well, and it doesn't have to be a Kindle. This can be on an Android device that has the Amazon App Store installed. So you can do it that way if you like. So when I plug in the Kindle through USB, I get this little Android file transfer icon. I don't think you can see it, but it will pop up as soon as you plug it in. Um, and what I need to do is I need to go, I'm just going to go to the download folder, and I'm going to get my, my APK that was sent to us from the developer, which is this one here. And I'm going to click on this, and I'm just going to drag it over. And I don't think I had installed it before. Because I've got some previous versions on this here, so I just want to make sure that I'm, that I'm going to install the right one because there's quite a few files in this folder. All right, so that's one there. So I'm just going to open open up my Kindle, and hopefully you guys can see this okay as I'm scrolling around. What I'm doing is I'm going to go to this ES3 file explorer here, which is kind of like Windows Explorer or Finder on the Mac, and it can be downloaded from the Amazon App Store and probably from Google Play. But it's a really good uh, visual file explorer, and I recommend it. It's pretty cool. So what I do is I click on. Um, I can go back to. Let me just find it. So okay, so if I go to the home the home pop by clicking on the top here, uh, go back to the main device, and then if I go to SD card, download, and there it is, the bubble Panda Tap 1015, and all I'm going to do is click on that. And it should say, you know, do you want to install? Yes, I want to install it. Let it go through its installation process. I'm looking at the reflection on my Mac here to see how this works. <laughs> so hopefully I'm seeing everything okay. Application installed. Click open. And hopefully this should run okay. I've not actually tested this version yet, uh, so I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if it's going to crash or if there's going to be any problem. Um, and there was a problem there, but and it's closed down, so we'll try it again. So you can see how this video is very raw. There's nothing, this hasn't been really planned out very well, but uh, that's okay. The To do the sort of full tutorial videos do uh, do take quite a lot of planning and time, and since, since I can't do that, at least I can give you guys some useful kind of step uh, walkthrough videos that, I've, that I'm doing now. So there we go, it looks like it's okay now. It's a little slow. So as you can see, this is a it's a candy bubble shooting game. I'm just going to turn the volume down here. I won't let me turn down the volume on that screen. Anyway, I'll just let you guys see for a moment. So just just to give you an idea of what the game is, um, the in-app purchases in this game are cash. Uh, the in-app purchases in this game are cash, so the player will um, uh, basically 
by Cash to unlock new levels, so similar to Candy Crush Saga. And you can see that the game is inspired by Candy Crush Saga. Uh, and it's actually a reskin of another game that we've released called Pop the Fruit 2, which is on Amazon and Google Play. Uh, these types of games are actually very popular amongst casual players and they really enjoy it and we've got good ratings and the game does do pretty good revenue as well, especially for a smaller developer and a smaller publisher, so that, that's pretty good. Um, but I'm going to go through and test the in-app purchases first. There's some, of the, there's some of the feedback points that I need to give the developer here. Just for example, like this one here, these ads, these are called smart banner ads. They cover the full length of the Kindle device. They do not make a lot of money. This is an ad mob ad and it doesn't make, it makes very little money. So I'm going to tell the developer to change these type of ads to different style of ad mob ads. I'm going to do a video on that guys because it can make a lot more money in ad mob. So um, I'll share that in a different video and I'll stay on topic for this one. So um, let me just think what I've got to do next. I'm going to click on this cash button in the top right and this is our cash screen here. So we've got a range of cash items, 50 to 18, uh, yeah, to 4,000, and these are like 99 cents, um, 2.99, 5.99, all the way up to around, I think 49.99. So they always have a huge range of in-app purchases in your game, if possible. So the first thing is, if I click on cash, it shouldn't do anything unless I've already tested it, and it might work. So I'm just going to click away whilst. Uh, so I can see it guys and then I'll turn the camera around, turn it around to the camera so you guys can see. So just a second. Okay. Alright, so that seems to work and I'm just going to check something. I'm going to pause the video just for a second guys whilst I get my, my head together on what the next steps are and I'll be right back. Hey guys, I'm back. So to test the in-app purchases, um, what you need is basically two things that you need to have on the device itself. One is you need to install the SDK tester, which you can get downloaded from the Amazon developer portal. And I've put the link up here in, in my uh, Chrome, so it's developer.amazon.com forward slash sdk.html and then download the SDK. In, inside the SDK, you should find the SDK tester that you need to install on the device. And the SDK tester is an APK file. So once you install that, then what that can do is it allows it to make the calls to uh, simulate the in-app purchases on a device without needing to actually connect to the internet and, and get the information from the Amazon servers. So um, it's cool because it's local. You don't need to sort of connect to their servers or anything like this. Uh, the second thing is that you need to have a JSON file on the root of the SD card which contains the information of the in-app purchases and I'll show you that right now so that you guys can copy it and uh, you can exchange the information uh, for, for your own game or application. So let me find it, if I go to finder and I'm just going to open amazon.sdktester.json, it has to be this name if I remember correctly. I'm going to double click on this. And it should open up in whichever, um, uh, like text edit or uh, any kind of ID environment that you're using just to edit text. It can, it can be opened in anything. So, um, I'll give you the example that I'm using here for this game. So, this is, we have six in-app purchases here, okay? And for each in-app purchase, what you need to do is give the, uh, the ID of the purchase, which has to be unique, all right? And then if it's a consumable or an entitlement, a consumable is like coins or gold or something like this that the, the player can constantly buy. An entitlement, which is, I'll find it here, entitled, is something that would be unlocked once, like a level or, say, a car or something like this, okay? So make sure that you, you know which one is which, okay? Then the price, then... The title you don't need to you don't need to change this if you don't want to. It doesn't impact the in-app purchase or anything. It's just for information which pops up on the screen. Then the description and the the icon link again doesn't matter. Uh, it's just so that when the pop-up shows, you know which one it is. So you, you can leave these out if you want, and sometimes I do. Uh, but the price and the consumable and the name of it, I I keep in there just so it's nice and clear. Okay. Uh, this information here at the top is probably the most important one for the JSON file because that connects to which in-app purchase it is. So if I click on the 50 cash here, 
it's going to look up in the JSON file, oh, uh, yeah, this is the ID for 50 caches, com.moreshine.legend.pt.1, and then it will know how much to show when I tap on it. Like, for example, there, if I tap on 50 cash, and then it shows me uh, get 50 cash, $1, and hopefully you guys can see that okay right there, okay? All right, so the JSON file, let's just say, for example, that right now I've, I've only got these six in-app purchases and I've got no other games. You can add many, many game in-app purchases into one JSON file, so you don't need to delete the previous in-app purchases. Just keep them in the JSON file so that if you need to come back and test that game again later, the information is there. All right? If, um, let's say, for example, that this, I only have one in-app purchase, okay? The syntax, the, the way that you have to actually code the JSON file would be like this. I'm just going to delete that comma. I'm going to go back and I'm going to add in the, the closing braces here, okay? So here, I have to have the open braces, the closing braces, and then inside of that, the open and closed braces for the in-app purchase itself. So that would just be one, okay? If you're adding two, I'll just hit Command and Z to go back. All right, so you've got two here. So for example, PT1 and PT2, I would do it like this. Okay, so you have to have a comma there, guys, between the two in-app purchase uh, sections, okay? Uh, be careful of that. You do get some feedback from the SDK test that if the syntax is wrong, but, um, you know, just be careful because I've run into some problems with that before just because my syntax was not correct, okay? So this, guys, here, this is what you would put into a JSON file and then you would change your own information, okay? So I'm just highlighting this here so it's nice and clear for you guys when you come to do this yourself, all right? So, and the other thing is, just to mention, is that there is a JSON file, I believe, inside of the SDK download from the Amazon. So when you open up the SDK, you unzip it, there will be uh, the SDK tester APK file, and then this Amazon SDK J JSON file as well, all right? So I'm just going to click Save. I didn't make any changes there because the in-app purchases are working, but I just wanted to show you guys, all right? So you've got your JSON file. Uh, you've installed the Amazon SDK Tester APK onto your Android or Kindle. And then the next thing is you need to get the JSON file into the device so that you can test it, okay? So uh, how would I do that? So if I click on the Kindle pop-up here, or this might be a File Explorer, or, or uh, sorry, a Windows Explorer, or, or whichever system you have. And if I go, this should be the main one. And there it is, okay? So this is the SD card here. And then the Amazon SDK tester. Sorry, I'm just going to re-plug in my USB. Sometimes it disconnects. And, okay, just let that pop up. Okay, so this is the root. Amazon SDK, uh, Amazon SDK tester JSON. So what I would do is, once I've made this file and I've saved it on my Mac or my PC, I'm just going to quit. I'm just going to find the file, which is here on my desktop somewhere. And I've probably just gone past it. That's right at the top. There we go, highlighted. So Amazon SDK tester. And then all I need to do is just drag it into there. And it should ask me, do I want to replace it? Yeah, I'll replace it. It's fine. And that is pretty much it. Once you have the game loaded, um, then obviously you tap on the button and then it should pop up with something like that, like I showed you before. And once you click purchase, then it would reward the player. It says, thank you for purchasing 50 cash. And then you can close it down. Uh, the other thing is, guys, just to note as well, is that if you do this, um, if you've got the pop-up like this and you close it, don't show any message to the user. Don't show them, oh, purchase failed or you cancelled the purchase or anything like this. Amazon won't let you do that. When they go through the approval process, they'll say you can't say it. You can't. Um, uh, you can't give the user any kind of notice. All right. So just so you know, if they do buy the cash and or buy your coins or your weapons or whatever, then you can show a notice after it's successful. Okay. So. That's pretty much it for this one, guys. I just wanted to make this real quick and fast because I was testing and I thought it might be useful. I didn't talk about the code here, uh, about how to do like the Amazon in-app purchase uh, like query and then how to get the information and then, and, then, uh, and then how to reward the player. 
that that's a separate thing. This is mainly just about testing about the uh, the JSON file side and the SDK tester side. Uh, the code side is on a separate video. I think I did on my channel. So, but uh, the one thing is as well, just to while well, whilst I'm on the subject, is once you do have the in-app purchase IDs, these ones here that we looked at before, these are the ones that you'd put inside of your Amazon portal. So, for example, this com uh the in-app purchase ID. If you go into your Amazon page, wherever mine is. Um, I've just set up a quick, uh, 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 started to set up the game uh, part here. Click in up in up items. Can't think of what to say today, guys. I'm sorry. It's two fifteen in the afternoon, so it's still early for me. Yeah. All right. So in up items, and then you click on add consumable or entitlement. And remember, consumable is like coins, gold, something like this. Entitlement is like a weapon or a car, something that you would unlock forever. Uh, click on add consumable. And then what you would enter is the SKU, which is the in-app purchase ID, like this. Give it a title, like 50 cash or whatever, and then you'd click save, all right? Now, the problem is with mine here that uh, you guys should be fine if you're doing a unique one, but the problem is this one, uh, this SKU, this in-app purchase ID has already been used on the Pop the Fruit game. So the developers, uh, what they need to do is they need to change the in-app purchase IDs inside this game to a new ID because we can't have one game has the same ID as another game. So just FYI, uh, you can't have like game number one has 10 cash, game number two has 10 cash, and they're both got the same SKUs. They have to have game one dot cash and then game two dot cash or something like this. All right. Um, and the other thing I finally mentioned as well, and I'll do it on a video soon, guys, is for the developer this this uh, ad here, this ad mob ad at the bottom is uh, a smart banner ad because it's filling up the full screen on the Kindle and as I said before this will not make a lot of money so they need to update it to show the different size of ads and I'll talk about that more because I was able to increase the money of one of the games by around eight times on AdMob. A very very useful thing and I, I we always recommend it to developers and I started to do it in my own games as well. So anyway I hope that video was okay I hope you guys were able to follow along okay you know, sort of roughly how to do this. Uh, it was an intermediate sort of follow through, if you want to call it that. And uh, hopefully, you guys got some good information out of that. But let me know if there's any questions, obviously, comments. I'm going to try and keep these videos coming because I've, I really enjoy doing them and I really uh, enjoy talking with you guys uh, because I'm basically down here on my own uh, in a way with no other developers to talk to face to face right now. So it feels like I got some communication. It's good. Uh, the other thing is, guys. Uh, for any comments, um, what I'm going to do is um, obviously reply, uh, but I'm also going to ask you if you could upload uh, our Kingdom of Zombies video to your channel. It just really, really helps us out a lot, um, and it's very fast, it's very easy to upload a video to YouTube, and I can give you the link, and it just helps us to spread the word, that's all, and it's obviously free to do. I'm going to put the link of that video inside the description, but if you do give a comment and then at the bottom I say, oh, could you please upload this video? Uh, if I ask you like five or six times, don't worry, I'm just repeating that to everybody. So if you've already done it and I ask you again, just ignore it. So anyway, guys, happy developing. Have a great weekend. I'm going to speak to you all soon. Okay, bye-bye.